hey friends welcome back to my channel today i have prepared for you my best 20 diys in 2020 i hope you will lay back relax and enjoy them this project was part of the look for less challenge that i actually co-hosted with yummy over at the latina next door and um, I found this galvanized metal leaf wreath over at kirklands.com and I also found it at Hobby Lobby but you saw the price and I knew I could recreate it for less. So I took this metal wreath that came actually from the Dollar Tree and I took these three uh, cookie sheet pans that also came uh, I think from Dollar General or Dollar Tree. Either way they were inexpensive. So now I'm first taking um, just a cardboard and I'm cutting out two leaves that is going to be template for my wreath. Now uh, I am tracing the leaves on the cookie sheets. I uh, created two different sizes of leaves. After I was done uh, I am cutting them all out. I use my regular kitchen scissors but um, I, if you have the metal shears that will definitely work way better so after I was done uh, cutting them all out um, this is how they all looked like I had a bunch of them um, cut out so now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut out the outer uh, ring of this wreath form and uh, next I'm gonna take each leaf and I took this uh, ruler that I got from the Dollar Tree and I am folding the leaf uh, a little bit in half you see me doing it over here and I'm gonna do that to uh, every single piece of um, metal leaf that I created so I'm just folding it a little bit in a half after that I'm taking my pliers that's what I had on hand and I'm uh, making a little folds on the side like I'm showing over here to uh, give impression of a real leaf form now I'm taking these two Arteza uh, outdoor paints, they're brown and um, black, and then I'm using a sponge going around the edges with brown and black, um, same like it was in uh, inspiration piece. And then after I was done with that, I am taking another sponge and I'm using just a white and a, a gray, light gray color to make it look galvanized. I didn't uh, do too much I wanted to make it light galvanized look so when I was done with all my leaves this is how they looked like and now it was time to um, put them all together on my wreath so I used uh, hot glue and I used a lot a lot of hot glue to attach um, the pieces of uh, leaves to my wreath and I was just going over until I was completely uh, done putting them on and I went back and added more and more hot glue to make sure everything stays in place. Now I went back with a sponge just um, uh, putting uh, the paint somewhere where it came off uh, when I pulled the glue, hot glue. And this is how it turned out. This is definitely my most favorite um, project that I made this year. I absolutely love it. And I had it on my door all throughout the summer, uh, fall and I'm sure it's gonna be in my home for a long time. You saw how much I saved by making it by myself and I absolutely love it. I want to hear from you. What do you think? My two dear friends, Heidi over at Heidi Sample DIY and Leonep at DIY Beauty on Purpose are the ones that got us all uh, creators together to make this 20 favorite DIYs for you guys. And there's going to be playlists in the description box as well as their um, channel links so you can go ahead and check it out. For this project, I'm taking a board that I already had on hand and I'm cutting it in three pieces. I believe it was 10 inches, 8 inches and 5 inches. After I cut them all out, I am going to go ahead and I also took these little um, painter sticks that I cut out to size 
and now I'm just sanding off the edges and after that I am using my Gorilla wood glue to attach these three pieces together in a uh, kind of um, pyramid um, shape. When all this was uh, dry, uh, dry, I took these two uh, acrylic paints, brown, uh, one was darker brown, one was lighter brown. I mixed them together and added some water and that created kind of a stain effect. So you see me over here putting the paint on and just wiping it off. When I was done with that, I decided this is a little bit too dark for me. So I took a gray uh, acrylic paint and I um, diluted it with water. And then I went over this the same way, wiping off the excess. I'm doing exactly the same thing with these two little pieces of um, painter sticks. And then I left everything to dry. When everything was completely dried, I took uh, these two pieces of painter sticks and I put them um, together like so. I actually uh, used just the hot glue to attach it. So this will represent the roof as you can tell so far. After I was done with that, I went ahead and uh, got my Cricut and I created a stencil. On the top it is, as you can see, um, nativity scene. Next one is Christmas and on the third block is begin with Christ. When I was done with this part, I took two pieces of cardboard and I glued them together with just a school of glue because I needed something sturdy and two um, cardboard will make it sturdy enough to attach this star that I created on my Cricut. And I actually cut out around the star and that way I had a star shape that had some backing on it and made it sturdy enough. You'll see me over here in just a minute, um, cutting it all out and you'll see how it looks like. There it is. So now I'm going to attach it with a hot glue on the top of my manger. I will have a link in the description box um, if you want to recreate the same thing on your Cricut. I'm going to have a link. When I was done with this part, I took a Mod Podge and I went over uh, the picture and the lettering because I wanted to make sure it stays. Now while I was going over the nativity part, the top part and the star, I took a little bit of glitter. I'm not a glitter person, but I decided this needed a little glitter and it was very subtle uh, glitter and I put it on top and I wanted that to represent a starry night. I wanted that to represent a lot of stars in the sky and you will see later it really, really looked like that. Maybe the video doesn't show really good. Um, it kind of looked a little bit greenish probably because of the light, but it's actually just a white nice uh, shiny glitter and I absolutely love it. This is my second um, my second favorite project and I am in love with it. I absolutely absolutely love it. Tell me what you think for this one as well. This uh, project was actually part of the um, video that I've created as a part of the Friend Friday Hop that was hosted by Heidi Sambal and I'm gonna have that video linked as well in my description box if you want to check it out. For this project, I'm going to be using uh, these two uh, colors of um, acrylic colors from Arteza. It is a brown and a gray, and I mix them to together with um, a water, and I'm creating a stain effect, and I'm staining the frame. This is a wooden frame that actually also came from Arteza. So you see me now adding um, a little more gray because I wanted it to uh, look lighter. Next I'm taking this white acrylic paint also from Arteza and I am painting the whole inside part of this wooden frame. I wasn't too careful because it is a um, you know rusting style and it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but if you recreating this and you want it to be perfect you could certainly add a tape. Now I'm just dry brushing it um, this white paint on a frame and after that I am going to go ahead and start uh, with painting the inside. 
painting the picture. I'm using these uh, paint markers from Arteza. They're super easy to use. You just shake them up a little bit. You press a couple of times for paint to start coming out and it is ready to go. So I'm using a couple of different markers as you can see me over here. And I am creating um, first mountain look over here. I actually seen this picture in one of the stores and I wanted to recreate it so bad. So this is actually from my memory. I was just trying to do as best as I can to create um, a scenery. So I'm going back and forth with different kind of uh, paints, paint colors, um, just trying to make it look appealing. Next, I'm taking this green blue aqua color and I am uh, starting to create the pine trees. Now, I'm not really good at painting, but you don't have to be really, really good to create a beautiful picture. You see me doing it over here. You see me going back and forth and just trying to add different colors, different textures, and it worked out at the end, you will see. So different colors, and then I added white at the end because I wanted to make sure it looks like it's snowed on. And then um, again, since it's a paint, it is very easy. You can even wipe it off just to smudge it a little bit. It is, I love these markers. They're absolutely perfect and easy to use. So when I was done with uh, painting this picture and when I was happy the way it looks like, I went ahead and got my uh, pencil and I started writing the words and the words are go tell it on a mountain. So um, I just uh, ha free handed uh, the way I um, knew the best, just simple um, font. It wasn't anything uh, specific, but if you want to use uh, any kind of um, stencil or even uh, with your cutting machine, you can certainly do that. Next, I'm using again a paint marker, but I uh, flipped the tip because I wanted a fine tip and I'm going over the letters. And after that, this project is complete. I know I keep saying this is, again, another of my favorite. That's why it's in top 20 um, DIYs, but I really, really like this one. You know, I wanted to incorporate um, Christ in um, my Christmas videos, especially, but I try to do it in most of my videos and I absolutely love how this turned out. It is special to me and it stays in my home for a long time. Now I'm taking for this project, uh, this bamboo skewers, I am creating kind of a triangle shape and I am going to um, secure them together with a hot glue. When I was done uh, adding a hot glue and when everything was completely dried, I made sure to cut off the excess. So the only thing left was that uh, perfect triangle shape. Now that I'm done with that, I'm taking another bamboo skewer and I'm cutting it um, the size of the bottom part of the triangle because I'm going to attach it to the top again. Next, I'm taking a longer or actually another bamboo skewer and I'm uh, pushing it through that, those two bottom ones and I'm attaching it to the top. And also I'm putting a little bit of glue on the bottom. I'm sorry, it's out of the frame. You can't see it, but you see it over here. Now I'm taking this jute wine, it is just natural light color of jute wine, and I am starting wrapping it around my triangle shaped tree. Now I didn't have any particular pattern to wrap it around, I just started wrapping it and then at some point I started going a little uh, crisscross and just, like I said, no particular pattern, just whatever I thought it looked good. I uh, started a little tight, but then um, going downwards, I made it a little bit loose because I thought it would look um, nice not to be completely tight. Now you see how it looks like uh, almost all done. And now I'm doing it on um, the bottom part. I am making sure to add a lot of hot glue over there to keep this jute wine in place. And I'm covering up all the uh, bamboo skewers so nobody can see it. When I was done with this part, I um, next thing I'm going to go ahead and add uh, 
two more bamboo skewers on the bottom along with the small one that's sticking out because it wasn't long enough so i wanted to extend it next i'm taking this um, darker jute wine that came from the dollar tree and i am wrapping it on a, um, the stem of the christmas tree adding a hot glue here and there just to make sure it keeps it in place and I, when i thought it was long enough i just cut off the excess of the bamboo skewers and that's it now i'm taking these um, berries uh, from the wine that i actually got at joanne's last year after the christmas sale that's the best time to shop and i am adding them sporadically on my christmas tree which can represent either ornaments or um, lights it doesn't matter i thought it looks beautiful and next i'm taking these um, white and silver pearls that also came from joanne's and i am adding them also on my christmas tree those again can represent ornaments or lights either way i think it really looks beautiful now i'm taking this mini uh, milk um, galvanized can that came from hobby lobby i got it on a clearance for inexpensive less than a dollar i think i'm putting a little bit of paper towel and then a little piece of um, burlap inside and then i'm sticking my christmas tree in it now i'm taking a raffia and i'm wrapping it around the uh, tree or actually sorry around the um, milk jug and i'm adding a little bit of pine cones and um, some berries and that's it for this christmas tree i didn't show but you can see that i added one extra pearl on top of the christmas tree to represent either a christmas star or just topper any kind of topper If you're new to my channel, if you're coming from this playlist, I want to welcome you. I'm Yelena, stay-at-home mom of two kids who loves doing DIY projects on a budget. Everything that I make is very inexpensive. And if that's something that interests you, please go ahead and check out my other videos. And don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you. I have a lot of great videos planned for the upcoming year. Also, if you're on a social media, please... Um, follow me i am on instagram facebook and pinterest i would love to connect with you and you can see more of my life over there as well for this project i am using leftovers of um, some boards you can tell that are very old and i am going to um, create kind of a drawer type of um, thing and i am uh, taking two of them for the sides and one uh, cutting out in half and that way i have um, perfect rectangle shape and now i'm going to um, go ahead and use a uh, gorilla wood glue and screws as well to put um, them together and to create that uh, rectangle shape and after I was completely done uh, putting it all together, I'm going to take a very hard cardboard, that's what I had on hand, and I'm cutting out uh, for the bottom of my drawer. Now this is going to be in my covered patio area, so it's not gonna be exposed to any elements, uh, weather elements, and I didn't have any plywood on hand, so that's why I did this. So I am um, attaching two of these hard cardboards, with a hot glue and all-purpose glue and after I was done with that I am just attaching it with small nails on the bottom of my drawer. Now if I ever want to replace it with plywood I can certainly do that it is easy to do. Next I am sanding off a little um, bit just the rough edges that are over there. I wanted this to be distressed and rustic but not uh, like this not so much. So after I was done sanding it I went ahead and got my um, 
Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in a linen white color and I lightly, lightly painted over. So again, I didn't want a full coverage, I just lightly painted because I wanted uniform color. Now I'm taking this beautiful, beautiful um, door handle that I actually got at a yard sale and I'm just attaching it with a um, super glue and my hot glue because it is going to be, have just decorative purpose. I didn't want to screw it in. Now I am sanding off the and just a little bit, making it distressed the way I wanted it. And after I was done distressing it, I took my Waverly chalk paint in color truffle and then added um, it, distressed it actually even further, just in the places that I wanted it to be distressed. Next, I'm using these styrofoam pieces that I just saved from some packaging. I'm putting them inside of my box and then I decided to paint with acrylic green acrylic paint the top of that because I am going to add a moss and I didn't want any white to show through. Next, I'm taking these, uh, I think it was baby breath uh, flowers from the Dollar Tree because this was in the springtime and I'm just pushing them through that styrofoam arranging them the best um, that I um, knew, the best that I, that, that I thought it looked the best. So after I was done with that, this project is complete. This drawer is so beautiful. I love it. And it is something I wanted to create for such a long time. And I think it turned out so, so pretty. I used it all throughout the year. It was on my uh, front porch. I changed out the flowers and in the fall time I used it for my pumpkins. So I think it is so versatile and I just think it's gorgeous. And the best part, it cost me literally nothing to make it. For this project, I'm using uh, this um, sign board that came from the Dollar Tree. First, I am actually sending off the glitter that's on one side and making sure everything is nice and smooth. Next, I'm taking this uh, Waverly chalk paint in a color truffle and I am painting the whole board. While that was drying, I'm taking these beads from the Dollar Tree and I am going to uh, put them on a skewer and then I will paint them with this Waverly chalk paint in a color celery and leave them to dry. So um, I don't remember exactly how many um, I paint painted, but um, it was quite a lot. So I put them uh, like so to dry. After my board was dry, I took this Waverly chalk paint in a color mineral uh, to kind of distress the edges. I wanted to make sure the edges look really, really um, nice and kind of like cloudy. So now that my beads are dried, I'm starting to thread them through my uh, white jute twine. And I made sure that um, there's more beads on uh, one in one row. And then I took, I believe it was 12 in a smaller row. And you will see just in just a minute what I'm talking about. So this is the smaller one and I'm making sure to um, create a knot on each side uh, so they don't fall down, fall through. And then I'm making sure there is a space in the middle of the smaller one. And again, you'll see later why. Now I'm just using the same white jute twine, creating a tassel for um, my beads. I am sure most of you know how to create tassel. If you don't, you can follow this tutorial or there's so many tutorials online and even in my videos how to create one. So now I took that tassel and I attached it to uh, the longer bead string. And after I was done with that, uh, it is time to assemble my cross. Uh, I'm taking that longer tassel and I think I am counting six if I'm right uh, from the top to uh, going down. And then as you saw, I attached that uh, smaller bead string 
and now I'm just adding a hot glue to secure it to my board. Now I decided to use a jute twine and um, I pull it through the two uh, holes in the top because I wanted to have an option of hanging this sign. When I was done with this, I thought I was completely done, but this sign looked a little bit plain. So I decided to add some wording on the bottom. So what I did, I took um, this stencil that I uh, already had on hand and I started uh, writing the words, uh, he is a resin. This uh, DIY I actually created around Easter this year, so uh, it was perfect. As you can see, I was uh, first tracing it with my pencil and after that I took a fine brush and a white paint and I just filled in the letters and um, this is how it turned out. After that, I just kind of a little dry brushed it just to make it blend in better and that was it for this project. I really, really like this um, decor piece. It was in my home all throughout the Easter time and I even left it a little bit um, after. I really, really like it. I love the colors on it and I think um, it couldn't be easier to make and it was so inexpensive. For this project, I used one of these signs from the Dollar Tree and then I used this um, decorative flag galvanized also from the Dollar Tree as well as some of the Django blocks again from the Dollar Tree. The first thing I want to do is just take off the twine on the top and the tag. Next, I will cut off the tails, but not all the way. I'll show you um, like this with my kitchen scissors. And then I'm taking the board, but I'm uh, measuring, it, measuring it sideways, like you see me doing it over here. And then I'm just scoring it a few times with the box cutter. It is super easy to break these boards. Um, and then I just use my scissors to straighten it a little bit. I'm not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna be visible anyway, so this worked out. Now I'm using the super glue and um, in combination with the hot glue, to attach this galvanized sign to my board but as you can see i'm using i'm uh, attaching it offset now i am uh, using three sets of three jenga blocks putting them together in line like so after i was done with these then i'm taking i believe it was six times two and i'm attaching them together now i'm using the uh, three of them and I am attaching them using combination of those two glues, like earlier. I'm attaching one in the middle, one on the bottom, and then next I'm attaching the longer ones. I wanted the back to be flushed, and then uh, on the top, as you can see, it is sticking out. Now, before I attach the second long one, I am going to take another Jenga block and I will measure out, you see there is a part missing, I'm gonna measure out how much to cut. I'm using my mother saw to cut it out and then after I was done cutting it and sanding it a little bit I'm going to um, glue them over there I just use my hot glue to glue them in place and now I'm attaching the top uh, part as well I think you can already guess what is this gonna be it is uh, representing old-fashioned washboard I um, had that idea as soon as I saw that sign and I think it's turning out pretty good. Now I'm using three different kind of paints, uh, dark gray, light gray, and a brown. And I am uh, going over the uh, this galvanized part of the board uh, sporadically. So I'm not going to use any kind of pattern. So I'm actually just going heavily on one area and lighter on the other one because um, those old washboards get um, a very... Um, rusty on certain parts and not on the other ones so that's what i try to achieve and then i'm taking the same sponge with um, those colors and just lightly lightly distressing those jenga blocks um, that are representing the frame now i am uh, freehanding the word laundry first with a pencil on top 
and uh, then I'm using just a regular black marker to do the same. And after that, I'm taking the same sponge uh, that already had some paint on it and kind of distressing and making it um, look a little bit dirty. And after that, this project is complete. I, uh, before I created this project, I um, actually updated my laundry room and this fit perfectly in there. It looked so, so beautiful. And um, you can see over here, it fits like a glove. This was such an easy project to make. It was very inexpensive. You saw that everything came from the Dollar Tree and I think it turned out so beautiful and I am sure I'm gonna make a larger version of this as well. For this next project, I am using this uh, large wooden board that came actually from Target Dollar Spot, but I got it from Dirt Cheap. And I already just distressed it a little bit with a white paint. Now I'm using the um, chalk, kid chalk, and I am uh, freehanding a pumpkin shape. I saw this picture online just of a pumpkin and I thought it would look perfect on uh, this board. After I was done, um, just uh, creating this pumpkin. I'm taking this light, light green um, chalk paint that I made um, myself. And I'm gonna also use later for shading uh, this Waverly chalk paint in a color celery. So first I'm starting with that light green chalk paint and I am just painting uh, each section separately. And as you can see, I'm just going in a kind of curvy motion because I wanted it to really look like a real pumpkin. I left a little bit of space between each layers of the pumpkin and you will see later why. So first I, I tried to go immediately with the, that celery color to do the shading, but it kind of started blended in and I didn't want that. So I uh, left it um, out and I decided to go ahead and finish my pumpkin completely. And um, that will allow my pumpkin paint to dry completely. And now that the whole pumpkin is painted, I went ahead and started um, dry brushing with that celery color and you see how everything turned out. Now I'm taking a jute wine and a hot glue uh, and I am attaching it or actually tracing um, around the pumpkin. So around every a line that I actually previously painted with the chalk. I wanted to create a 3D effect and at the end you will see I succeeded. I really like how it turned out. So this took a little bit of patience and a little bit of time just to make sure everything fits perfectly, but um, it was fun to do it. Now that that part is done, I uh, had on hand this autumn sign and I absolutely loved the font, but it was so small. So I decided to uh, use that font and uh, freehanded uh, myself. And I used this marker to trace it over. And then after that, I took uh, the chalk that I started off with and I just kind of um, painted over it to make it look distressed. And after that, this project is complete. This was one of my favorite fall uh, DIYs that I made and it was very, very unique. Uh, nothing like I've ever done and I absolutely love it. For this next project, I'm using a board that I already had on hand and I am measuring 10 inches. I cut twice 10 inches and I'm just using my miter saw to cut it. The reason why I cut this and uh, created two of these because I didn't have one bigger board. If you had that, you can certainly use one bigger board. Now I'm using this large ruler that came from Lowe's and I am measuring 10 inches as well, again, two times. 
and I'm cutting it. And this dowel came from Walmart and I'm measuring five inches twice and I'm cutting that as well. So now we're, you see what we uh, end up with. Now I'm taking my Gorilla wood glue and I'm going to attach these two together as well as these paint sticks or actually roller sticks. I'm gonna attach them together as well. I made sure to fasten them with my clamp to make sure they stick together. Now again, if you have some thicker wood that will work, you should certainly use that. I did not have, so I wanted to make sure um, it is thick. So that's why I used two um, roller sticks. As you can see, I am sanding everything, making sure everything is nice and smooth. And I wanted to take away as many uh, numbers on these roller sticks as possible. Now I'm taking the wood filler and I'm filling out um, the gaps between uh, these two roller sticks where I glue them together. Next, I'm taking this drill bit and I am creating two holes on in the middle on both sides of the uh, base that I created. I measured, I'm not sure, I think it was maybe an inch from the end. And I um, did the same thing with the roller sticks as well making sure uh, that I'm uh, doing the same distance from the end, so one inch as well. So after I was done with this, it was time to sand everything very well. And then I even took my electric sander to sand the edges. I wanted everything to be a uh, nice and smooth. Now that everything is sanded, I'm taking my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in a linen white color and I'm heavily distressing everything. So um, everything got one heavy coat of this chalk paint and chalk paint dries pretty fast. So um, after that, I took my Gorilla wood glue and I put a pretty good amount in those holes that I created on the base. And I put the dowels in those holes. I left that to dry completely and after that I'm taking this Beverly chalk paint in a color truffle and a little sponge and I am distressing the edges. I wanted to make this really farmhousey, rustic and used up. I wanted this to look really, really old. So I'm going over the whole piece and um, also this, this one as well, especially focusing on the edges. Next, I am taking this um, Restorium chalk paint or sorry a Waverly chalk paint in color mineral doing the same thing going over but I was focusing now uh, on the whole surface this one is a little bit lighter color and I wanted to go over and uh, dry brush the surface next I'm taking this Waverly chalk paint in a color celery and I am adding it to some certain spots to edges um, and that will represent that old paint that is coming through you know how those old um, pieces that if you ever had old pieces you can see some old paint coming through and this is what it represents and after that i was just using a clear wax to go over it to protect it and this is how my napkin holder turned out i really really love this piece we use it every day and um, it looks beautiful with white napkins or if um, i'm using any other color depending on the season i really really like how this turned out and i think it is so easy to make and very very inexpensive again for my next project i am going to use some larger craft sticks and i am going to cut off the a curvy part on them. I am using my exacto knife to cut out um, those ends. It is very easy to do. You just uh, score it a few times and it pops off. After that, um, the only two um, are the two end ones that you can see I cut the ends um, in a angle and that's because this will represent a pumpkin. So I wanted to create that pumpkin shape. Now I am using a smaller craft sticks and I am um, using a hot glue gun to attach it 
sideways because I wanted to make sure it keeps it in place. So I'm using two on the top and two on the bottom. I'm cutting over here to fit the size. And then that way uh, all these will stay together, it will not move. Now I'm using my favorite Rust-Oleum chalk paint in a linen white color and I am using my chippy brush from the Dollar Tree and I'm heavily distressing it. I was focusing uh, mostly on the middle of the pumpkin but again I uh, was not uh, planning on having full coverage. I just wanted it to be distressed. Next I'm taking uh, one of those large uh, craft sticks and I am cutting it in an angle and you see over here. And then that's going to represent the stem. I am sanding it like I did with other pieces. And then I'm going to take um, this uh, brown craft uh, paint. It was just a regular acry acrylic paint. And I am painting or actually really distressing um, the stem. And I'm using this mineral uh, chalk paint by Waverly um, to um, actually go over my pumpkin. I mixed a little bit of that truffle paint as well and then I am just going over the edges making it distressed. Now I'm taking the same small craft stick that I used earlier to attach all the pieces and this way I am um, using a hot glue to attach the stem uh, to my pumpkin. Now I'm using a pencil and I'm freehanding the word blessed. I found the font online. I usually do that. I found the font that I like online and I am um, just writing the word. After that, I'm using this marker that has both a very fine uh, tip and a thick tip. And I am using the uh, fine one first and then the thick one to just uh, enhance some of the sides of the uh, letters. Now I'm using raffia to wrap around the stem and I am creating a very simple bow cutting off the tails and I'm putting a little bit of hot glue to keep it in place. Now I am adding these two uh, leaves, artificial leaves, and then I'm showing you that, that you can use a paint stick or any kind of stick that you have uh, to use it as a base, but I already have this pre-made base out of Django blocks that I used to prompt this pumpkin. Um, again, this is one of um, my very very dear uh, project i really like it i had it on my shelf all throughout the fall season and i heard from you guys that you like it a lot the best part is that it's very inexpensive and easy to make for the next one it is again pumpkin it is a fall um, diy i'm using this pumpkin sign that came from the dollar tree and i'm uh, gonna cut off first the hanging part so all the um, jute twine on it and then I am going to flip it over, fill out the holes um, that are already on those signs and then uh, with a wood filler and when it's dry I'm just sanding it to make sure everything is nice and smooth. After I was done with that I am going to um, take the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in a linen white color. You know how much I like that paint and I am going to start painting the pumpkin. Now, um, I actually wanted to, again, you know I like, if you're following me, you know I like heavily distressing more than painting. So I am um, adding paint um, a little by little and I'm going in a circle of motion, actually curved motion, because I really wanted those lines, pumpkin lines, um, to show, uh, to look like a real pumpkin. Next, I'm going to take this large craft sticks while my pumpkin is drying. And I'm going to take first two and I'm going to cut out the size of the bottom part of this um, sign. You see me measuring over here. And I am going to just score a few times with my exacto um, knife and I will cut it off. Now that that's done, I'm taking another craft stick and I'm going to measure the width of these two craft sticks and I'm going to cut two of those and those are going to be sides. Now I'm taking just leftovers of a craft sticks. I wanted to put um, glue them together on the, those two large craft sticks. You see me what I'm doing over here and that way they will be kept in place. 
now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, creating that mini crate. So I am assembling it like I'm showing over here. I'm adding a um, good amount of hot glue on the side and um, that way I am attaching these the sides first. Next, I'm going to take the Waverly chalk paint in color truffle and I'm going to start painting um, first this uh, front side. You will see um, that's going to be the front uh, side of this mini crate. And then after that, while that is drying, I'm taking the same brush and I'm creating those uh, kind of lines, pumpkin lines with that same um, color mineral and then I'm taking the Waverly chalk paint in a color truffle and I am distressing um, it even further especially painting uh, the stem now I'm using the chippy brush from the Dollar Tree they are great for distressing when I was done with that I'm taking the Waverly chalk paint in a color uh, celery and I'm enhancing those uh, pumpkin lines you see me doing it over here. I want it really to look uh, realistic. Now I'm trying to assemble that mini crate on the bottom, attaching uh, the one that I created from uh, craft sticks to the existing um, sign uh, rectangle part that was already there. And I'm adding a good amount of hot glue. Now, um, first, at first I painted the out, outer edge, edge of this mini crate but I decided later to paint everything you will see uh, later that everything is painted because I didn't want anything to show through um, I thought it would look much nicer now while that was drying I'm taking these woodcraft cubes that came from the Dollar Tree four of them and I'm painting them with the same mineral color and those are going to represent the legs for that whole project the pumpkin and it's going to be attached to the crate, like I'm showing over here. I'm using a hot glue for all this. Now it's time to attach this mini crate that I created to my uh, pumpkin that I painted previously. When all that was done, then uh, I added even more hot glue because I really, really wanted all this to stay in place and now I'm taking this truffle paint that I like to use to distress these this front and actually everything where I thought that needed distressing next I'm going to take um, this craft sticks a large craft stick a little piece and I'm going to uh, paint it with a uh, rust-oleum chalk paint in linen white color just a light coat because I didn't want that wood color I wanted it to be white and when it was dried, I am uh, freehanding the word happy fall. I actually wanted to write um, hello fall, but my daughter was right there. She was talking to me and I, for some reason, just said happy fall. But I think it turned out cute. I'm going over this um, brush tip marker and I am uh, just putting a little lines all the way around. So that created kind of a tag effect and I'm hot gluing it on the front of this mini crate. I really think this turned out so, so cute. Um, I think this can be filled with anything, mini pumpkins, gourds, or even acorns like I showed over here. Next project. For this project, I am uh, taking magazine that I already had at home, and I'm going to show you how to create a Christmas tree. So first, um, I am folding the top left corner towards the middle, and then a uh, uh, bottom left corner towards um, the middle as well and then all that I'm going to fold towards the middle now uh, since I don't want to create a crease I didn't want to fold this completely I'm going to uh, reinforce it with a hot glue and you will see later why I didn't want to create a crease because I thought the Christmas tree looks way better if there is no crease so in the beginning like I said I was using a hot glue to reinforce the pages and made, make sure they stay in place. Now I'm going to show, show you a few more times how I did this. So you see me folding the top and then folding the bottom as well and then just kind of really lightly folding everything in. When I was going towards the end of the magazine 
it, I really didn't have to use a hot glue anymore because it was getting thicker and thicker and it just the pages just, just stayed in. I used up the whole uh, magazine for my Christmas tree but if you're doing this you can certainly um, use as much as you want depending how thick you want your tree to be. So this is how it is how it looks like when it was done. You see how beautiful those rounded edges are. That's why I didn't want um, to fold the um, crease, to create a crease. Now I'm using this Rust-Oleum spray paint in a silver color. And after it was spray painted, this is how it turned out. The only thing left to do was to add a star on top. And this is actually part of the those string uh, lights, star from the 4th of July uh, season. And I'm going to just hot glue it on the top. And that's it for this super easy project. When I made this, a uh, lot of you uh, loved it. I got a great feedback and a lot of you said that you used to do that as a kid and it brings back memories. So I'm glad I was able to bring back memories. And this is certainly such a beautiful and elegant tree. And I'm sure I'm going to make it again next Christmas season. Like I said in the beginning of this video, this is uh, going to have a playlist. So make sure to go ahead and check it out in my description box. There's going to be a ton, a ton of inspiration for the beautiful, beautiful DIYs that all my uh, crafty uh, friends um, created for you guys. Also, make sure to follow me on the social media and also check out my community tab. I will announce when is my... Um, beginning of new year starts when are my videos are coming back and i'm gonna go full swing i have great great inspiration great ideas for next year so please stay tuned okay for my next product i'm using uh, this styrofoam wreath form that came from the uh, dollar tree and then i want to spray paint it with just regular white spray paint after that, I am going to uh, use a Stolium chalk paint in a, a linen white color, and I'm going to just uh, paint two bottom and top part. You see me over here that I taped out um, on four places um, this wreath, and that's going to kind of uh, separate this white color, and you will see me later using a blue color. So this is the crystal bl coastal blue by Rustoleum, but I mixed it up with my uh, white paint. So this is what I got, and I'm gonna paint the opposite sides of this wreath form. So now I'm taking off the uh, tape. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect because you will see in just a minute. I am going to use this uh, rope, nautical rope that came from the Dollar Tree. I love this rope. It is so beautiful. So I'm going to uh, lightly uh, wrap around just to see how much I need, leaving some ends loose. And as you can already tell, I'm creating the life-saving device. So when I had everything um, in place, I am using a craft glue and a hot glue to um, wrap it a few times around, making sure that uh, the um, cord or actually sorry rope that I uh, had around is uh, staying inside of these three loops. This uh, rope is very pretty but it frays a lot so if you're using it make sure to just cut it nicely and keep it in place. So this is how it looks like when everything was done and I'm taking the stencils and this coastal blue color. Um, First, I'm going to just trace the stencils or actually trace the uh, letters with my pencil. They, that took a little bit of time because this wreath is curved. So I had to um, really be careful not to move the stencil. After that, I'm taking fine brush and I started filling in the letters with that coastal blue color. Now, again, if you um, would prefer to using stickers, you can certainly do that. Um, I really like this and it's suiting to filling the letters. It takes some time, but if you like crafting, you can turn on the show or music and the time passes. So um, I created the words that says welcome on board. And when everything is, was done, um, you can certainly put something to embellish this, like uh, shells, for example, in one of these uh, ropes parts, but I decided to leave it as it is because I think it's perfect just uh, plain. So this is how my life-saving device turned out in our 
uh, old house. We had a um, backyard uh, in a coastal team. So it fit perfectly. We had it out the whole time. This is such a super easy and ex inexpensive project to do. And I really think it looks high end. Tell me what you think. Okay, for this project, I'll try to explain as best as I can. Uh, this is the square dowel that I actually got from Home Depot, I think, for 98 cents. And I am going to uh, take the letters that came from Dollar Tree. Um, the word is going to be joy. So first, I'm going to put them under. So um, going from top to bottom, I'm going to measure how much to leave space in between each letter so the um, dowel can uh, fit in between them and also I'm going to measure how much to cut how tall my ladder is going to be so I'm creating a mini ladder so I'm measuring um, two of those and I'm going to cut them with my mother saw so now you see that I have two of longer pieces and now I'm going to try to uh, measure how much I need of the little pieces that's going to go across of my ladder and then after I measure them all, again, I cut them up. And when I was done cutting them, I made sure to send them just a little bit. I didn't want edges to be rough. I wanted everything to fit perfectly. Now, this is how everything will look at the end. But now it's time to um, use my Gorilla wood glue and glue them all together. I'm using a little toothpick. It is easier to... Uh, just put everything where it goes so the glue doesn't go all over the place so this was a little tricky because you know wood glue is not like a hot glue it doesn't immediately bond so I had to make sure that my letter stays uh, properly straight so it doesn't um, you know tilt which happens after while that was drying I'm taking this uh, red craft paint and I am painting my uh, letters red I painted both sides and also you know um, the inner and outer edges of these letters and while that was drying I'm taking this Waverly chalk paint in a silver lining color and I gave it a full coverage to my letter I wanted um, this to be completely full I didn't want any distressing any wood to show through through because I really liked how this gray matches um, the red or actually goes along with this red um, letters I think it's so so pretty together so when all this was dried it is time to add a little bit of wood glue and some hot glue to my letters and since they're very snug in between um, the letter pieces I had to really push the letters in and the the problem is that the uh, glue came out so I had to use a toothpick to pick it out. By the time I came to the letter Y, I realized that I should have done it from the back side and that's what I did. It was less messy, but you know, we all make mistakes and we all, all learn along the way. Either way, I really think um, this was a success and I did what I wanted to do. Now I'm going to add a little piece of greenery that I already previously painted or distressed white and I'm putting it on the top left corner and then I'm taking this berry wine and I'm wrapping it on the right side of my letter from the top to bottom and that's it for this DIY. This was such a cute project and so interesting uh, to make. I really enjoyed making it and I I uh, had it on my shelf for a long time. My kids really liked it because, you know, it is, um, you know, it, it looks like a letter and it's fun for kids. And I really liked it. And if you're recreating, you can use any um, co colors you want or any uh, words you want. So you can make it as big or, or as small as you would like.
for this project i'm going to be using one of these shadow boxes that came from the dollar tree i'm going to take off the wrapping and i will take off the back or actually the inner part of this sign the only thing i need actually is a frame so the first thing i want to do is take the painter stings painter sticks that came from um, I believe Lowe's for 98 cents and I'm going to measure the inner part of the this frame I'm going to use four of them I'm going to measure how much to cut and I cut them up with my miter saw and now I'm going to give them uh, one coat uh, of rust-oleum chalk paint in a linen white color and again I made sure that the middle part is has the best coverage and the ends are really not that important to be covered i like that they're a little bit distressed while that's drying i'm taking this red acrylic paint and i'm giving this frame two coats i wanted this to have full coverage but since this is plastic frame it was really hard for the paint to stay on so i really gave i think two or maybe three coats and it was hard really on some places the uh, red the black still show through but it's okay it made it look distressed now i'm putting the painter sticks in the frame making sure they're spaced out properly i'm using a hot glue to attach them to my frame when all are in and glued i'm taking these uh, letter stickers from the dollar tree in a red color they're conveniently in a red color and i'm spelling out words merry christmas I am doing it on a third and on a fourth um, painter stick and um, first I just put them lightly because I wanted to make sure they are all, all straight as possible and then after that I press them out a little bit. Then I'm taking this mi um, mini tree and I am just uh, kind of one side pressing down because I want it to be flat so it can sit nicely on um, my frame and then i'm taking uh, these mini beads they're squared and i actually put a little piece of uh, bamboo skewer in them so they don't have a hole and then i painted them in a, a mineral chalk paint and after they were dry i am taking this mini mini thread and i am wrapping it around to create um present kind of a, a present looking um a little pieces so I have two of them and I'm going to glue them on the bottom of my frame next to the Christmas tree. After I was done with that, uh, my son suggested that this needs a, uh, lights. So I'm taking this um, kind of a berry uh, wine looking um, uh, wreath and I'm taking just a piece of it and I am hot gluing it on top like I'm showing over here. And that's it for this project. I really like it. I know you you keep hearing I like this, I like this, but these are my top favorite um, projects that I made this year. I really like it. I think this one really looks high end and it's made out of Dollar Tree items and painter sticks. I mean, how uh, more inexpensive can it be? For my next project, I am using these jumbo, huge uh, craft sticks that came from Walmart. I am taking seven of them, I think, and I am flipping um, the wrong side, or actually side that doesn't look so good towards me. And I am going to take another craft stick and I am going to just hot glue it on top of it, or actually in the middle of it, because I wanted to make sure to keep it in place. After um, I did that, I'm going to flip it on a nice side and then I will use just a simple lid that I had at home that fits and I will trace the circle around it with my pencil. And then I'm going to take kitchen scissors and I'm going to start cutting um, that circle. These craft sticks are so easy to cut, so no need to use any other kind of tool. Now I'm uh, taking more craft sticks and reinforcing it in a back. 
When I was done with that, I am sanding the edges a little bit. I wanted to make sure everything is as smooth as possible. When I was done with that, I am taking this uh, Waverly chalk paint in a color mineral and I am distressing uh, this or actually heavily distressing uh, this circle. I really, really wanted it to look um, like old distressed wood. Now I'm using this truffle by Waverly chalk paint and I am distressing it even further. So you see now how it really looks like an old wood. Next, I didn't show, but I'm uh, adding a little bit of white paint because I wanted it um, just to get some extra dimension to it. Now I got this from Walmart for 99 cents. These are clock hands and I'm going to use the one that is actually for seconds. That one fits perfectly and since these are uh, craft sticks, they're super easy to poke through. So I'm just using small uh, scissors to poke a hole. I wanted to poke uh, big enough uh, for this hand to fit in and to be able to move around but not to fall out. Now this hand was just a little bit long so I cut it off very easily with my scissors. Now when I uh, had that done I am taking the stencil. I have no idea where I got it from but it has snowflakes on it and I chose to go with just a simple snowflake Using my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in a linen white color, I am just dabbing using my sponge on um, that paint. I wanted to make sure it doesn't bleed, so I really didn't use a lot of paint. I just um, used as less as possible whatever was left on a sponge. And it was a success. Now I'm using my uh, pencil freehanding a Merry Christmas on top. And then after that, I am starting to write uh, numbers. Now, this is not a regular clock. This is actually a Christmas countdown um, clock. So it is going to have 25 numbers. And I tried to space them out as best as I could. Now, you see me over here deleting it a couple of times, erasing it because I didn't space out properly. But thankfully... This was so easy to erase and didn't leave any mark. When I was happy with the way it turned out, the way, with the way it was spaced out, I took this fine brush and my white paint and I started um, filling in the numbers. Now this took a little bit of time again. Every time I'm uh, filling in some letters or numbers, it does take some time, but it's fun to do and I really enjoy it. And my numbers are certainly not perfect and they're not all the same. If you're recreating this, you can use uh, stencils, you can use your cutting machine or already pre-made stickers, whatever you, you would like if you really want them to look perfect and all uniformed. When I was done with uh, numbers, I'm taking the silver permanent marker and I'm going over the words Merry Christmas. I didn't want that to stick out too much, so I didn't want any red color or any bright colors, so I chose the silver one. I'm just go going a little bit, going to add a little bit of white there and that's it. Next, I am actually going to use um, some green colors, so moss and celery chalk paints by Waverly and I am creating a small a vine that is going to be on the top of this clock right above the words Merry Christmas. So I am first starting with a darker one creating the leaves and after that I'm going to use the lighter one to add some shading to it. And that's it for this super, super cute Christmas countdown clock. We used it this year. My kids loved it. And my idea was actually to make a bigger one out of wood. But since we were moving, I was able to create a smaller one that was convenient to carry with us. And it was easy to create with just things that you have around. And probably most of you can do the same. Back up your suitcase, we'll find a new place. 
for this DIY, I'm going to be using the this wreath form that came from Dollar Tree, as well as this car cleaning cloth, also from the Dollar Tree. The first thing I'm going to do, I will cut out strips of this fabric. I'm not sure how many inches is probably two inches strips, but it doesn't matter. I just wanted to space them out um, as best as I could. And now I'm going to start wrapping them around my reed form. I attach it with my hot glue. And then you will see in just a second how I wrap them around. This was super easy to make. I just made sure they are spaced out properly and I wrapped them out so um, nothing is sticking out and no um, wire shows through. Using this technique, uh, one cloth is just enough for the whole reed to be covered. So after I was done with this, I took this wood piece that I actually found outside on our walk and I decided to hot glue it on the bottom inner part of my reed. I used quite a bit of hot glue to attach it. I actually added a little bit more later on, on the back. I really wanted, to, wanted it to stay um, in place. Next, I am um, using this mini um, small owl that actually, I think it came from Walmart, I believe. I think so, for $0.98 cents or, or $1.98. And I decided to put it on one side of this um, branch. And their legs are made out of, her legs are made out of wire, so it was easy to really position them so she is grabbing onto that uh, branch. And with this, I had a little problem. I first added um, hot glue on the bottom of the bird, but that wasn't enough. So I really had to add a little piece um, of wood on the back of it, as you can see over here, to reinforce it. After that, that stayed in place. Now I had two different sizes of um, pine cone, and I decided to use a smaller one to put on the other side. And after that, that's it for this cute winter wreath i really like this one it was last winter on my door and i absolutely love it and it was so inexpensive to make And now one valentine's day craft i'm using this crate that i already used for my previous project I'm using uh, the XOXO sign from the Dollar Tree, galvanized sign, white um, jute twine, white acrylic paint, paintbrush, craft sticks, and red and orange um, acrylic paint, and my hot glue gun. I'm using the paper, um, craft paper with hearts that came from Hobby Lobby, and I'm tracing my crate um, to cut out that craft paper um, to the size. Now I am painting the inner part of the crate, just the sides, with my uh, Waverly chalk paint in a color white. And I just uh, wanted to distress it. It doesn't matter if it's not uh, perfectly painted. I really wanted it that way. After that, I'm using my hot glue uh, to attach my craft paper on the inside of this crate so now i'm taking four or actually five small craft sticks and putting them next to each other and i'm taking next craft stick and i'm putting it uh, diagonally making sure that it fits properly hot gluing it and then i'm taking one extra one cutting it to the size and i am putting it other way diagonally so that way everything is nice and secure and this is nice mini plaque now i'm uh, putting together or mixing together orange a red and a white color creating this beautiful pink pinkish um, 
paint color and I am painting this uh, mini plaque that I created from my craft sticks. After that, I'm taking this foam board, uh, cutting a little, two little pieces that I'm going to actually uh, hot glue on the back of the XOXO galvanized sign. That way it will be raised up a little bit from um, my plaque and you will see in just a minute. So now I'm adding hot glue on that as well and that way I will put it uh, or actually attach it to my uh, pink plaque. I decided to put it uh, straight. I didn't want it diagonally. I think it looks perfect. Next, I will go ahead and get some white jute twine. I will pipe it through this um, opening on my crate and tie a few knots, making sure they're big enough so the uh, thread doesn't go through, or actually jute twine doesn't go through. I'm doing the same thing with the other one. After I was done with that, I am going to go ahead and get my plaque and I will attach it to the jute twine, adding quite a bit of hot glue, keeping it in place. And I wanted to make sure to add a little bit of um, tape on the back because I wanted to make sure it stays in place. You will see that in just a second. I am cutting off the excess of a jute twine and then that's it for this project. This is one of my first uh, Valentine's Day DIY projects and it is very dear to my heart and I really think it's very unique and different and I love 3D effect, effect of this um, project, of this uh, decor. I think it's beautiful. Okay, for my next project, I'm using a Dollar Tree bead that I painted in white color. I think it was Rust-Oleum white paint. Then I'm going to distress them with the Waverly chalk paint in the color truffle. I have some larger ones and smaller ones. It really doesn't matter. I'm taking these Easter eggs and I wanted to spray paint them with white, but that really was a disaster. So don't ever do that. So I ended up... Um, using the skewers, poking them through and using my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in a linen white color, painting them that way and leaving them to dry. That was a success. So when everything was uh, nice and dry, I um, took the natural color jute twine and I uh, decided to pipe through these eggs. Now since these eggs open up it was so easy I didn't have any um, a large needle so it was easy this way to pipe through the egg. So first I um, added some beads then I popped through the egg and I closed the egg together. Now there, there was a few spots where there was a damage but that was an easy fix and it was uh, no problem at all. So I alternated the beads and the eggs and that way I created this beautiful, beautiful garland. You see how it looks like. Now, like I said, there was some uh, little pieces that I had to uh, touch up, but that was not a problem at all. When I was done with that, I uh, took my pencil and started writing words like faith um, and Jesus and Easter and then you will see over here all the words and then I trace them with um, the marker. Now I am right now creating a tassel that will go on both ends. Like I said you can see the tutorials for making tassels on my channel and also on many other channels as well. Now I cannot take the credit for this garland. I actually saw it on Pinterest but the words are different. I just really liked how it looks like so I decided to uh, add the words that I really like and that had meaning for me. So now that my tassels are done, I'm going to attach them uh, on each end of my garland. Just very easy to attach. And after that, this super cute Easter garland was done. I want to hear your thoughts about this. Tell me what you think.
And for my last project, I'm going to be using these beautiful, beautiful colors, uh, acrylic paint colors from Arteza. And I'll also be using a large um, canvas that also came from Arteza. I'm going to actually use a paper, um, toilet paper roll, and I will cut out very tiny slits on a bottom. And you will see after I was done cutting them out what you should get. So after I was done cutting them out and I got this kind of a funny looking shape, now I am going to add one color at a time and I'm going to dip, you see me over here, um, paper towel roll to it. And I'm going to start just creating dandelions on my um, canvas. I alternated colors any way I wanted. I really didn't have any particular pattern. I just decided to go with it and use the colors that I like and just added more and more and more, uh, putting them off offset just a little bit. And it was just such a fun project. This is the first time I did something like this and I was amazed how beautiful it looked. Then I decided to use a little bit of um, paint and my paintbrush to add, um, to make a stem and then um, just to add on some places that I thought needed um, a little more attention and uh, that is all that it's to it uh, when it comes to this painting. If you're recreating this you can really use any colors you want. Can you imagine using the black canvas with white or opposite white and black? That's beautiful too. So the only thing left to do for me was to uh, put a little bit of yellow in the middle and then I'm using the two different colors of a jute wine, natural and white, and I wrapped a few times on the bottom and that's it for this project. So, so simple and so beautiful, but honestly it looks like an art piece. Um, you would think that it took for a long time to make this, but actually I think it took me 15 minutes to finish from the beginning till the end. So tell me what you think about this one and tell me which one of this was your top favorite. I would like to hear from you. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you will subscribe to my channel. If you're not already subscribed, make sure to like this video and share it. It means so much to me. And I want to thank all the participants over here and especially um, Heidi and Leonep for uh, organizing this for us. Make sure to check out playlists in the description box and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.